With declining birth rates and increasing life expectancy, it's believed by many that social security as it exists today will become unavailable or at least minimized for would-be retirees in the decades to come. This is because there will be less workers with strong income paying taxes and more retirees in need of support. These seniors will either have to rely on their loved ones or return to the workforce in order to financially support themselves. This coupled with the fact that corporations are only getting more and more efficient at draining money from the working class and will only continue to get more efficient may lead to the possibility that you will literally be worked to death. Such a dystopia is depicted in DreamWorks 2007 Bee Movie, in which every bee already expects to be working every day until they die. The protagonist, Barry B. Benson, isn't content with such a life and wants to see the world before society works him to death. Upon seeing the outside world, however, Barry comes to realize how downtrodden his people truly are. If you couldn't tell, bees are a stand-in not only for the working class, but underprivileged minorities as well. It's no coincidence bees are black and yellow and referred to as bee-ish in the film. The bourgeoisie represented by humans are disgusted by the sight of bees and don't want to associate with them despite wanting to pick the fruits of their labor. They make the honey, and we make the money. Honey is a clear metaphor for capital and materialistic goods, for in bee society everything runs on and is made by honey. Outside of hives, bees are worked under cruel conditions so that their masters may reap the benefits. The 1% are predatory, and this is a clear illustration on how they ultimately have the most power in deciding who gets what salary and compensation. This is sometimes called a case of monopsony, where one party has most of the buying power. Because many people don't have the ability to travel around a large city or to move to different locations, their job pool is limited to what's in their range. Bees both in honey farms and berries hive are limited to their respective hives and it's a very strict system with a fickle job market. Barry's friend Adam initially wants to work the Krellman, but that decision is in the whims of a hyper-fast logistical system no individual can keep up with. Let's also discuss the Krellman job itself, as it appears to be a bullshit job. Bullshit job is a term coined in a 2008 cultural theory book titled Bullshit Jobs, A Theory. In it, author David Graeber proposes that some occupations have little to no value to society at large, and in a society where people give themselves personal value based off their job is ultimately harmful, as they'll either lie to themselves and ignore how unimportant their role is, or belittle themselves for having such a job in the first place. The bees on the Kroman could easily be replaced with automation, yet the super efficient bee society keeps it, probably because there are more bees than meaningful jobs so they had to make more in order to keep the population working and keeping the hive active. Bee population at large appears to be widely uneducated, as Barry's photo evidence is laughed off as a conspiracy theory, further illustrating how corporations have brainwashed the working class into complacency. They're already co-signed themselves to lifelong labor, at that point the bourgeoisie can get them to believe anything. Barry's following court case is an amazing escapist fantasy as it picks the legal system as somewhat reasonable. But before I get to that, I'd be remiss not to mention Barry's battle with Ken. Ken is a privileged, straight white male. The embodiment of complacency and comfort, as opposed to complacency and squalor. The idea of him or his girlfriend to be Vanessa associating with the bee disgusts him to the point of violence. Despite putting up a decent fight, ultimately Barry can't stop Ken by himself. And Ken is left to continue his life largely unpunished by the end of the film. This will become an echo to Barry's role later on, and the ending itself, but I'll get to that later. The bourgeoisie tried to pull dirty tricks to win the court case, such as using creationist arguments and feeding the jury harmful stereotypes about bees. But the facts bring the truth to light, not only resulting in the end of the abuse towards the working class, but also in fair compensation. The resulting flood of capital into bee society is so great that all the bees can safely retire with honey to spare. This is where the film gets really interesting as it shows a complete opposite dystopia to the one at the beginning of the film. One of inefficiency and the desire not to work. A recent movement in young generations is the FIRE movement, an acronym for Financial Independence Retire Early, where individuals cut back at as much expense as possible in order to amass enough funds for an early retirement, where they can live life and devote themselves to projects and jobs of their choosing. One major criticism of this movement is how if it became too widespread, it would lead to a massive hole in the workforce further resulting in the death of social security we talked about earlier and a judgement to the economy at large. Represented in the film by the declining state of the environment. Some bees are even unfulfilled and unhappy with their newfound freedom. It's a hard pill, but work may truly be what gives us meaning in life. So if giving the working class complete autonomy doesn't lead to balance, what's the answer? 
Perhaps capitalism is so fundamentally broken that long-term balance is impossible. Barry and Vanessa's solution is a simple one. Kickstart the economy again and this time try to bridge the gap between the working class and the bourgeoisie to try and keep both happy. Ultimately, this solution is one of acceptance. Capitalism is evil and it's geared towards predatory, manipulative practices in the long term. But ultimately, it's the only thing that can sustain our current standards of living. Barry's solution is an uphill battle, not unlike the fable from the East, of the dragon and the tiger. If the bourgeoisie represents the imperial, all-powerful dragon, then Barry is the tiger, the one responsible for eating pieces of the dragon should it grow too lazy or powerful. But ultimately, the tiger can never defeat the dragon. All it can do is stunt its growth. Inequality will always exist in some capacity, and it still exists very much today. So be prepared to eat the rich. Take as much as you can from them. Not all of us can succeed like Barry, but we can't let it be easy for them to trample upon us. We may be playing by their rules, and the pendulum will swing back and forth forever. But if we don't fight for ourselves, then a world much worse than the one we have is sure to come. That's why Barry and Vanessa will continue to try and make changes to the lives of the little people, giving them jobs and fields that keep them happy, while continuing to bite off pieces of the bourgeoisie in the form of legal battles. Ultimately, the bee society got to keep its honey, and they can now work with more flexibility, as seen with Adam's ability to take up his job of interest. At the end of the day, we have to keep working with each other in order to provide for each other. But we must never forget that looming dragon in the distance. That dragon called the bourgeoisie. Thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. I'd like to thank my good pal Mocha for drawing this sick banner and profile picture for me. I really appreciate it. Link to his Instagram in the description.